one year of service. I now request the Honorable Minister sir, to please release the handbook for environmental guidelines for our stream. And we are all aware, ladies and gentlemen, that uh, because of uh, complex processes of obtaining various environmental clearances, usually there is a delay and that impacts our timeline, net deadlines, and increased liabilities. So this is a comprehensive handbook, formulated facilities, streamlining of the clearance processes with a particular focus on the Northeast region. It will not only aid in the timely monetization of the oil and gas resources, but also shall contribute to the sustainable development. And uh, now, ladies and gentlemen, as we all uh, wait to be led and guided by the thought leadership of our Honorable Minister, sir, Without further ado, I request the Honourable Minister of Petroleum and Natural Gas, our Chief Guest, Shri Hadeep Singh Puriji, inviting him for his inaugural address. The Director General in the Directorate General of Hydrocarbons, Dr. Pallavi Jain, my colleagues, Additional Secretary, in the Ministry, Sri Praveen Malakhanuja, my collaborator in among the UNCs, Sri Arun Kumar Singh, CMD of ONGC, Sri Ranji Rath, CMD of Oil India Limited, Captains of Industry, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen. I would like to start by complimenting the Director General of Hydrocarbon and the Director General for convening this meeting, this gathering for interaction between the DGH and the other stakeholders in, the important, in this important sector of our economy. I would particularly like to thank the DG herself and all those who have made it possible. I have been uh, associated with the Ministry of Petroleum and Natural Gas almost three years to the day. Before this three-year association, I have spent several years with other ministries of the Modi team and before that a long 39 year career in the foreign service and 6 years in different forms are thereafter in the international think tanking business or do tanking as we used to call it. But when I look at the state in which we find ourselves today I cannot think of any bigger challenge that confronts us than the need to ramp up and transform the matter, manner in which we are looking at issues relating to exploration and production. So I think and I hope that this first edition of the Urja Varta, which literally translated means energy dialogue, will provide all of you a forum for thoughtful discussions that further this, the discourse of India's energy sector. We have introduced many innovations in the last three years. We move the international focus on energy related issues in a not insignificant way to ourselves. We are the first India Energy Week in Bangalore, the last year, the last one in Goa and the third one coming in February will be in New Delhi. And thereafter it will become a permanent feature in Goa where we have, thanks to the ONGC, we are reproducing or rather developing a 240 acre site which apart from hosting the India Energy Week 
will also provide state of the art world class conference facilities let me come back to the enp sector no matter which way you look at it it is integral in our journey towards energy self sufficiency which is critical for sustained economic growth and enp offers investment opportunities at least worth 100 billion dollars by 2030 having outlined the importance and the potential i think i would be failing in my duty if i did not underline strongly that despite our progress much of our exploration and production potential still lies untapped within india's 26 series sedimentary basin i find it particularly discomforting that considering that we continue to be dependent on crude oil imports to over 85% of our requirement and despite the abundant geological resources available to us our efforts in the past have been far short of what needs to be done it is not my purpose this morning in the keynote address to lay blame i think if you look at the historical context when uh, oil prices globally are within manageable range it is a normal tendency for anyone to turn around and say why do you want to bother with heavy investment exploration when you can just that easily import all your requirements that was in fact the advice given to me by some quarter when i had the privilege of joining in july 2021 but that is short sighted advice equally some of my friends in the fourth estate distinguished representatives of uh, different newspapers uh they often tell me why do you want to uh set up more refining capacity after all we are moving away from uh, fossil fuel to green fuel oh, yes everything is correct but you know i have been a great admirer of the fourth estate because i used to write columns also in the intervening period and that's a very comfortable thing to do you pick up one piece of news here and then you write a column on it not knowing that for every piece of news you write a column on 10 other things opposite are equally true yes i see my some of my friends uh, uh, so you must allow somebody who's been around for a long time to have a little bit of fun because otherwise we're at the receiving end so when i said i'm a great admirer of the fourth state but then they say oh the market is deregulated why are you trying to control who is my commitment to is my commitment to ensuring availability and affordability to my consumer or is it to some doctrine which was produced in some part of the world and i in the following that doctrine i then lined up with chaos uh, here it said with a great sense of pride that i say that as mr the honorable prime minister petroleum minister that throughout the pandemic throughout the last three years i have been associated with not a single shortfall has taken place anywhere that is what you mean by availability contrast that with what is happening around the country contrast that with what is happening around the world and you see the stark difference this is the only country in the world where prices have come down after a reference period and then when you have uh, as i said I am very intellectually correct that you know there's a little bit of this and then somebody else picks it up and says oh price is being come away if i were to produce all the crude oil or extract it from my own basin which i hope you guys will do soon 
then I would even say that uh, make it available uh, at the lowest possible cost. But life is full of challenges and I think what stands out as we meet today is that it's your ability to navigate those challenges for the satisfaction of your citizens. That is the challenge and that I believe is a challenge that the Honourable Prime Minister and his team have implemented to the full requirements of that period. Yes, there is global turmoil. When the global turmoil took place, we could have followed uh, uh, self-serving advice which came to us from many parts of the world. Our imports from a particular source was 0.2 percent of our requirement. We could have shifted the 5 million barrels of uh, crude oil that we consume in a day to the traditional suppliers. And you know what would have happened to oil prices? My friends with their philosophy would have written a nice column in a pink paper. But you know what would have happened? Oil prices would have gone up to $250. So as I, you know, I've been around for a long time. I told you I spent 40 years as a civil servant, six years as an international civil servant. Also, that's something that I have now seven years as a minister. So I take all this advice which comes with gratitude because it provides an opportunity for those people who provide the advice to look themselves in the mirror and ask themselves, what is it that they are advising? Whose interests are they serving? Our sedimentary basin is approximately nestled with approximately 651.8 million metric tons of crude oil and LF 1138.6 billion cubic meters of natural gas. And this is where we come to our failing. Only 10% of this sedimentary basin is currently under exploration today. After the award of the blocks under the forthcoming OALP rounds, it will increase to 16% by end 2024. While this is good progress, 6% in one go, it is not enough. I wish to use this opportunity to lay down the gauntlet, including my friends at the DGH, to step up. The focus of our exploratory endeavor must pivot towards discovering yet to find resources. And I've had several meetings with the DGS. I'm very happy to hear that they're burning the midnight oil, literally, that's at least what my additional secretary tells me. And that we will see fundamental change in a very short period of time. I'm aware of the various challenges stakeholders are facing, but also of the work needed to streamline operational and regulatory processes. It is important that we provide our labor pool with competitive opportunities, diversify our procurement and strengthen our engineering operations. The government is doing its part to catalyze investments in ENP. The Ministry of Petroleum and Natural Gas has instituted sweeping reforms, empowering stakeholders to contribute to our nation's progress. We intend to increase India's exploration acreage to 1 million square kilometers by 2030. No go areas in India's EEZ have also been reduced by almost 99%. The Open Acreage Licensing Policy, OALP, has accelerated production growth. Through the first eight rounds, a total of 144 blocks are covering approximately 244,000 square kilometers have been awarded. The recently announced OALP ninth round offers an area of approximately 136.596 thousand kilometers, 136,596 square kilometers, spread over eight sedimentary basins with the vision of expanding the nation's footprint in offshore exploration. Since its inception in 2015, the discovered small field policy has garnered investments of approximately 2 billion US dollars and brought in 29 new players in the field. The recent special DSF bid round presents fresh opportunities in Mumbai offshore and West Bengal. The opening up of the earthwide no-go areas has paved the way for exploration activities, 
in previously restricted zones, fostering investments notably in regions such as the Andaman. The government is spending heavily on promoting scientific data-driven exploration. An investment of 7,500 crores is going into the acquisition of new seismic data, including that of the EEZ, financing strategic stratigraphic wells and acquiring aerial survey data for difficult terrain. We now have geoscientific data for the Kerala Konkan Basin and the Mumbai Offshore Basin on the West Coast and the Mahanadi and Andaman Basins in the East Coast. DGH is upgrading the National Data Repository to a cloud-based India which will enable instant dissemination of seismic, well and production data. I was following up why it hasn't been done yet and now I have been assured the work order will be placed within one month. Ease of doing business is a key consideration that attracts investments into the ENP sector. This government has facilitated a tectonic shift through the revenue sharing contract policy which abandoned cumbersome approval processes in the earlier production sharing contracts. We simplified 37 processes requiring approvals into 18 processes of which 9 were put up for self-certification. It needs to be taken further. We must e examine whether we can move to total self-certification. Any delay in approval of fields development plan, annual plan and other regulatory permission is minimal as our import dependency is rising. Let me put this somewhat simply. Yes, the contractor has a role to play, he has to provide information, but while that process is going on, I don't see why work needs to come to a stop. And there's no reason why these permissions should be pending for extended period of time. I have been assured by the Director General that in fact they are already compiling a list of what the pendencies are, why the delays are and how to rectify them. DGH was established in 1993 to provide technical advice to the Ministry of Petroleum and Natural Gas on issues relevant to the exploration and development of hydrocarbons in India. In today's scenario, DGH needs to change its mindset and be more proactive with the stakeholder in resolving the impending issues in national interest. I have been a civil servant for 39 years and I can tell you there is one trait which comes naturally to a civil servant. Give him a file and a civil servant will look at 20 ways on how to exercise regulatory control. Not a bad thing in some cases where things are going wrong. But if you start mistaking your role as that of a regulator, instead of a facilitator, then you will end up with a large number of regulators. I can see my friends at the private sector having a good laugh at the back, but that's a reality. But we are changing that. I respond to all communications, including from trolls, almost immediately. Sometimes I don't respond personally because I don't want to uh, dignify them. But I don't think, don't think you've ever had a situation where the ministry is so responsive. And I'm sure that DGH will, is very much part of it and will also we will change that and very soon. I want to tell all those who are present today that we are committed to supporting ENP. We will not tolerate inordinate delays by any organization. Second, I have instructed the technical staff of DGS and MOPNG to have closer interaction with operators, visit the field more often, develop a better understanding of the ecosystem in which operations are conducted, and DGH shall approve all annual work program budgets prior to the financial year to provide contractors to execute, execute their activities in a time-bound manner. I am glad to announce the formation of a joint working group comprising representatives from the private ENP operators, the national oil companies, my ministry and DGH. It will examine issues relating to the ease of doing business in ENP adequacy of policies and procedures and the need for their revision. It will re submit its recommendations within eight weeks. Now, I know we are members of the press here. Please count eight weeks starting today. So today we are on 11th of uh, July. So very soon we'll have the report and we will not only focus on this but 
this is an opportunity for us to really press on the accelerator and going fast forward. I of course, I am also directing the GDH to complete the process of integration of its various online portals by the end of the year. Recently extended reach drilling was exempted from the Forest Conservation Act. ER ERD technology enables drilling of extended horizontal wells, thus offering significant advantages to ENP operations by allowing access to previously unreachable reservoirs, reducing the number of drilling sites, thereby minimizing the impact on the environment. For offshore blocks, the government has decided to award exploratory licensing along the signing of the contract. MOPNG is constantly pursuing the issue of clearances with relevant agencies of individual state governments. DGH has deputed 14 professionals in Assam, Tripura and Arunachal Pradesh to assist state governments to expedite proposals received from ESP operators for various statutory clearances. The government formed the Committee of Eminent External Experts to offer an alternative dispute resolution mechanism. 25 disputes which were pending for more than 10 years have now been settled amicably. And it is my <coughs> intent and resolve that there so will be the remaining disputes and any future disputes which arise. As we inaugurate this first edition of Pujja Varta, I encourage stakeholders from across the industry to leverage this forum to resources. I have high expectations for the Center for Hydrocarbon Efficiency and New Energy. This new department will prioritize hydrocarbon efficiency through carbon capture, utilization and storage initiatives and will monitor flaring, venting and leakages in oil and gas operations. It also aims to develop projects which integrate new geological energy sources such as geothermal and natural hydrogen into existing ENP operations. I will also be inaugurating the Exhibition Gallery and Innovation Center after this inaugural session. It showcases technical papers and presentations from the industry and academia on a range of salient issues in the oil and gas sector. I urge all of you to visit it and contribute to the discourse. I extend my best wishes to everyone gathered here today and thank you Director General for this initiative and a very warm welcome to all of you. Thank you very much. Cool, yes. In the mixed energy market of India. Thank you all.